about 20 minutes, Kevin. Okay, the broadcast no is problem. going live. Okay. Delighted to be with uh, Kevin Moore. And I met you once before, Kevin. I had a great chat with you above. We had, we had a Q&A above in Mayo, I think. You were above near Westport. Uh, I was just asking you there a second ago, how are you getting on with the COVID-19? You're in Manchester, I presume. I am indeed, Tomas. Yeah, over in Manchester. I don't think it's too different. This COVID-19, wherever you are, it seems to have the same effect. You know, it's called the lockdown. And I think we're, we've all been in it now for a, a number of months. So it's been uh, quite tough. So let's hope, you know, we soon come out of it and the restrictions will get less and less. I was talking, um, Kevin, I'm not going to go through a kind of a life story or start to start and go forward, but uh, Barry Cahill, the Dublin, former Dublin footballer, uh, heard you were coming on and he texted me and uh, he's a good guy and he says, would you ask him one question, please? He says, mm. just ask him, who was the toughest opponent? Was it Ogie Moran or was it Maradona? <laughs> <laughs> Different games. I wouldn't have liked to have took on Ogie play, playing soccer. <laughs> What was it like coming across Maradona? You played in, in the European Cup game. Did you, or, uh, was it a UEFA game or was it a, a European Cup game? You no, know, it was a big European Cup game. I played against him a few times. Um, the first time I played against Maradona actually was for Ireland. Ireland played a friendly game against Argentina. It was, it was probably my fourth or fifth international game. And he played in that. So that was about back in, well, 81 or something like that, you know, uh, 82. And then, but the big game I played against Maradona was when United played played Barcelona, and that was the quarterfinal of the Cup Winners' Cup, and um, that was when he was in his you know prime at the time himself and Schuster playing for Barcelona, which was a great team. And um, I can remember the first leg was in Barcelona. We lost two 0 and we took them back to Old Trafford, and people still talk about that game. The atmosphere was just incredible, and we beat them three 0 at home. So it was an, uh, that was. The most incredible game I can remember at Old Trafford. Yeah, the atmosphere as we go over. We're big United fans and we go over very often. I was watching yesterday, Kevin, uh, on TG Cahard, the old games, and I've seen you saying before that you wouldn't watch old soccer games as such, but you love watching the old Gaelic games. Is that true? Yeah, that, was, that is true, by the way. You know, I've watched, you know, that the game that was on, I was told about it, the 77, I think, semi final. I've watched that one and also the 76 final. Those two particular games, I'd know every incident what happens before it happens because I've watched it so often. But they're the only games I've watched. You know, the only games that really grabbed my excitement. But when I looked at a lot of the soccer games, there, there was even the United Cup final games, I've never really gone over. And maybe I will do sometime, you know, but I haven't done it yet, gone over those games or even the Ireland games, some of the great Ireland games. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just not the same amount of excitement that there was, you know, during those Dublin Kerry games. Yeah, I remember we used to, we were brought up watching Kerry's Golden Years. You know, it's not like it is now where you'd have social media and you'd have access to everything. Like and back then, we just had the Kerry's Golden Years. We used to watch it. But I was watching the game yesterday and it was obviously a brilliant game of football and all that. But I was just looking and paudy has gone and Tim kennelly has gone and John Egan is gone, and this year Anton O'Toole with the Dubs. I suppose he was a he was a, not only a crowd favourite, but he was very popular just in general. Kevin wasn't he? He was a great guy, Anton O'Toole. He was so so laid back in many ways. You know what I mean? You know, so easy to get on with. He had a great wit and a great sharp sense of you know fun and fun about him as well, and just a great humour. And um, and he was just, we all got on so well. It was the most amazing setup, I think, that Dublin out, um, setup. As the Kerry one was as well, I'm sure, you know. And it was a very special unit to be part of. Yeah, I saw. Um, you Were you ever part of the brigade that used to travel down to Ballybunion after after the matches that the list all races used to be on? I did. When you, when you consider, I was all new to the whole setup. So in 76, that was my first year with Dublin. So I had my baptism of fire down in Bally Bunyan as well after 76. And um, <laughs> I, I can remember um, in Bally, I, well, we, we stayed in Trilly, I think, was it? We used to be down, I think. Um, and um, I remember waking up one morning and going out on the street and the place was quiet and asking somebody, can you tell me where the races are? And they said, the races are in Bally Bunyan. And I went, I know, but whereabouts? He says, you're in Trilly. <laughs> I wasn't sure where I was. 
Oh, Jesus. It's a tough... It, they close the place down for the week. It's an awful long week down there. It's brilliant, though. But uh, can I ask you, Kevin, when you were growing up, was it soccer or GA when you were actually a young fella? For you? Well, young fella up to about 13, 14, it was GAA. It was all GAA. I went to uh, Christian Brothers School, so it was all GAA there. So I played them. Then I went to Drimna Castle. Um, it was all GAA there. And it was only... What happened was I was playing uh, club level with GAA and then I got a suspension for a year. And because of that, I went with some of our friends who I made in the area because we'd moved house. And they said to me, why did you come up to Bushy Park and have a tryout with Rangers schoolboy team, which I did do. And that was me. From there, I just started playing soccer on a Saturday. And what age were you at that stage, Kevin? I was 13, nearly 14. I was under 14 as I played, yeah. That was my first year playing. That was my first year playing, you know, at a, a club level in so, playing soccer under 14. And there was the, wait, uh, at that stage, did you represent Dublin at minor level or under 21 before you came in in 76? No, I, I never did. Um, I never represented them under minor at all. Um, I, I remember at minor level, I was asked to go for a trial, I think, myself and Pat Bourne. Um, we were asked to go and I think I remember we, we, we were making our way then something happened and we never made it and we came back and we just left it at that so I, I never bothered playing minor football at all really for Dublin because I wasn't playing that much GAA at the time it was mainly soccer I was playing at the time and when you came to 21s I'd actually played senior football before I played 21s Jesus what age were you when you were brought in because I saw somewhere written that in 75 you watched the, the game, but I suppose the breakthrough year for Dublin under Hefo was seventy four. And were you yeah. were you a fan, a big fan of the supporter, obviously that time as well, like you were? I, I was a fan of the team, all right, because I was at the seventy four All Ireland final. I remember bringing my brother to that game, my younger brother Jerry, uh, brought him to that game. And seventy five, then I was over in America as a student. I was over there for the summer, and I came back literally just about a week before the um, the All Ireland final. And then obviously I went to the All Ireland final in '75 and watched that without ever thinking. I wasn't playing Gaelic football at all at this stage, not playing it at all, and without ever thinking that a year later, you know, I'd be playing in 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 the next All Ireland in '76. So yeah, I was say, that was amazing. You'd hear the stories of, of the dubs, and I, I saw a decade of dubs, and I watched it, and they'd all be talking about pre Heffo and pre Kevin Heffernan coming in that the support wasn't there, the jazz wasn't there, the team wasn't successful. He came in. What was it? I like, I know Mick O'Dwyer and they were two unbelievable characters. What was it? Can you tell us, like, what did Heffernan bring to the dressing room? How was he in the dressing room? Was he... Well, you must remember, Kevin had brought it in back in 74, when Dublin Mundial Ireland in 74, so 73 when he came along. I came along a couple of years later. I was up already part of a setup. That Kevin had already brought along and brought the players in themselves. I think what he brought into the team, which wasn't there before, was a structure, a discipline, and a fitness level. And I think that was the key element of it as well. It was a fitness level that he demanded, but also as well, it was a level that the players were willing to commit to. You know, and there was a huge commitment made by the players to to be able to aspire to get to this particular level. But you must remember, a lot of these players would all say they were all there before and nothing was happening. You know, so mm. Kevin Heffernan came in. He obviously brought his knowledge of the game, his, you know, his enthusiasm to it, as I said, his, his discipline to it and the fitness level to it. And the, more important than anything else, the commitment level to it. I think when you look at back on any teams, and including Tomas, you might look at the Kerry team of that era with Mick O'Dwyer, it was the commitment shown by the people at the top, by Mick, by Kevin, and as well by the likes of Lorcan Redmond and Donald Colfer. Those particular people, it sees that you see that commitment. It comes down through the team itself, and they see they've got to put in the same amount as what the others are doing. And that's 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 the that's to me is the key is the commitment level. Yeah, it's so like <laughs> when you came in at the initially, Kevin, like a lot of those fellas, the Mullins. Uh, Anton O'Toole, Keaveney, they're all household names. Did you find it hard to settle in like you were a young fella? What was it like going into a dressing room full of those fellas? I'll, I'll be honest with you. The first trip I had was to play play against Kerry. That was my first 
ever trip with the guys. And I met them at, I think it was Kingsbridge Station, um, to go down. And a lot of them I wouldn't have known because I didn't follow it. I'd never, I didn't follow the Dubs. Even during the summer of 75, I was in America all the, all the time. I, I'd only gone, the only game I'd gone to before was the All-Ireland in 74. And then the next game I went to see Dublin play was the All-Ireland in 75. The next time I saw Dublin was, I was playing for them against Kerry in a, a practice game down in Philly. So I, I never really followed them as such around the country watching all the other games. I, was, I wasn't around for it, you know. So, and at the same time, I'm playing my, my main game at the time. My main emphasis wasn't Gaelic football, it was soccer. I was playing with first Rangers and then Bohemians. I was playing with Bohemians in League of Ireland. And when, when Kevin, did the interest, when did you first, like you were a, a fully, I presume that football took, uh, football as priority over soccer. When did you hear a uh, word coming from, from Dave Sexton across the water? Or was it United first? Or was it only United that came for you? No. Um, once again, while I was playing um, soccer with Rangers, schoolboy team, when I was 17, Pat Bourne and myself went over to Derby County for the trial for a week at Easter. You know the way kids sometimes go over? So we went yeah. over for that, but nothing came of it. You know, we came back and we never heard anything else. And then obviously I played more soccer than I was playing Gaelic football then at the time. So, you know, it moves on. It was more when my emphasis was on the playing soccer that Dublin came along. And then when my emphasis was totally on Dublin, the... The United thing came along, the soccer came along, because the fact I started playing, when I was playing with Dublin, I started playing with Pegasus, which is the postgraduate team, as you know, from UCD. And then I started playing a few games with them, and and they, we had a great cup run. And during the, that cup run, the chief scout at the time for um, United Chief Scout in Ireland, Billy B, a magnificent man, God rest him, he, he asked me to come over on trial to, to United. And at first I said, no, I said, no, I have too much of a commitment here with Dublin. And I said, no, I won't do it now. And he said, I might come back and ask you later. I said, well, try that, which he did do. And then when he came back the next time, I said, well, how long do I have to go over for? And he said, two weeks. And I said, oh, forget about two weeks. I said, I'll give you two days. You know. So I went over thinking, I'll just do two or three days. I'll be over and back and nobody will know anything about it. And I'll have gone over and had a look at the place. I expected nothing to happen. And lo and behold. Uh, how were the early days? Was it hard to settle in? Kevin, what age it were you was, when you were actually over there? I was actually over there. I'd finished um, 70. I was 21. I went over in February 78. So I was 21 then, 22 in the, in the April. So I went over then, and um, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. Because when I came in, they would have expected a little bit more of me. And by the way, I went over as a fullback, not centre-back. So right. when I played fullback, you could see I was, I was so raw. I was so far behind these other guys. And by the way, the guys I'm talking about being behind, these are only 17, 18. This was the youth team, you know, that I could hardly get into the team they were in. So at one stage, I was thinking, what am I doing here? But gradually, you know, the improvement came along. The, the further I went along, the more I, 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 I kind of like learned quickly. Let's put it that way. I find it uh, fascinating and you talk about nowadays and inter-county players and, the, and the, I suppose the effort they put in, the time they put in and the struggle they have playing with club. I find it fascinating that you were playing, you obviously came over in 78. I didn't realise you came back in 79, you were even coming back in 80. You were like, was it true that you played in America, you played in Gaelic Park yeah. and you were actually an Irish yeah. international, you were with United. Like, uh, obviously, could you tell us about the, the day you went back with your hamstring in two and your head split open? And I suppose, you know, all at United said no more. But you, you yeah, came well, after that, that again. That, that, well, that was 78 when I was already at United and fair play Dave Sexton allowed me to come over for the final, the 78 game against Kerry. And um, I can remember well then um, that... I was given a week beforehand to go, which I thought was fantastic. I was able to train with the boys on the Tuesday and the Thursday before it. But on the Tuesday beforehand, I pulled my hamstring. And it was quite a bad one. And then I tried to get a lot of treatment on it. And then I went out on the, on the Sunday to try and play. It was never any good. I could feel it in the, in the warm-up. and was gone. But I played throughout the game. And 
I must have just wrecked it all together, you know. So as soon as I came back to training the day after that, I obviously picked up about nine stitches in my head as well, unfortunately. I wasn't looking a bit worse for wear after the night as well in the town, as you do. Ogie, was it? But, <laughs> yeah. Was it Ogie the Yeah. So I must admit, you know, they did say to me, yeah, but they didn't have to say it to me. You kind of like knew that was the end of it. But the great thing about those days, Tomas, was that there was no social media. There was no mobile phones. There was nothing. So following year, I could come over here. Nobody would even know if I was playing Gaelic football. You know, nobody, they never got on the phone. Nobody interacted the same way as they do now. That's the reason why that happened the following year, 79 and 80, when I went to America and played in Gaelic Park in the final once again. I knew nobody would ever know anything about it. Crazy. Like When so you I, compare, Kevin, the, the two setups, like Dublin were probably as professional a, a Gaelic team in Ireland at the time. You went over to United. How did the two kind of setups compare? United were obviously ahead of what was in Ireland in terms of Gaelic games at the time, were they? Yeah, you would say that. But they weren't that far ahead. They were not that far ahead at all. You know, and this is the maze that people think, you know, thinking, oh, it must have been so far ahead. Not at all. My fitness level when I went over was as good, if not better, than anybody else over there. And I would have gone over in February 78, which would have been not exactly, you know, peak season, uh, peak season as well for playing daily football. That's why I always said the fitness level of the players at that time was equal to anything in professional football. And even nowadays, everything, everybody knows the levels have gone up because of conditions and, you know, you're looking at training techniques, you're looking at you know, dietary situations as well. I can guarantee you I'd put any money on the Gaelic players at this in this generation playing now are as fit, if not fitter, than the top professional players in England. Yeah, I, I, I think as well. Because of the nature of the game, right? Yeah. You need to be as fit. You need to be like the effort they put in. Even even from my day, right? I look at these guys. You know, full backs being full forwards, full forwards being full backs. You know, or half backs, and the movement on the pitch, the fitness levels. It, these guys aren't just jogging around the place either. At times, you know, there's full level sprints up, sprints back, get into play. You know, it's it, their fitness levels is just amazing. I, geez, I'm glad I'm gone because some of the dubs at the moment, Kevin, I, I wouldn't like to be following well, You are the same. <laughs> what was I going to say? The, the dressing room over, like, you obviously have unbelievable time and you were a very, very tight dressing room in Dublin, right? Well, you went over to United and from what I've read and what I've, I've heard you speak in the past, that United dressing room, there was great camaraderie in, in it as well, was there? There was. There was a lot of banter and a lot of fun about it, you know? You were able to have enjoy yourself. There was a lot of Mickey take. You, you had to be a strong individual as well. I, I don't know whether you, in your dressing room, you know, carry or whatever. But, you know, a dressing room can, you know, if you're not a strong enough character, you can fall very much underneath in a dressing room and, you know, fall by the wayside a little bit. You know, you've, it's a tough place to be, a dressing room. Because, as I said, there's a lot of Mickey taking, you know, and for that reason, you've got to be able to take it, give it, and that was makes the camaraderie in and amongst everybody as well. But, you know, I look back, I look at Dublin first, and then I look at United, right? And then I look at the Ireland setup. The camaraderie we had there was just unbelievable as well, with those guys from right throughout the 80s and then into, you know, 90s as well. It was amazing. So throughout my whole career, I've been so fortunate, you know what I mean, to have been with tremendous groups of players. So I can only think... This isn't just me. This is the situation for most players. That when they find they go into a group of players, they'll find, hey, these are a great bunch of guys. I get on great with them. You know, and if you move from one group to another group, it's probably going to be the same. You'd hope it to be the same. That's what it should be about. We, I, I'd be a United fan. I used to love watching Roy Keane. And my brother Dara, his favourite player of all time was Brian Robson. And what was he like in, in terms of, like, he was an all-rounder. Like, we had Seamus Moynan, who was well able to perform on the pitch, but he was good crack off the pitch as well. He was an all-rounder. Was, was <laughs> well, Robson... Brian Robson was very much every bit of that. He was an all-rounder <laughs> in every sense of the word. You know, what uh, what Brian did off the pitch, he had to be number one off the pitch as well. What he did on the pitch, he was number one as well, really. You know, so, you know, when it came to having a good party and having a good drink, 
you know, if you were ahead of Brian Robson, you know, hey, you were up there, believe me. But he could do it both ways, which is so important. There's no point in being able to do it one way, but you can't do it the other way. And, and Brian, Brian could do it at both ends. Well, your time in Spain, Kevin, you really enjoyed that, did you? That, that, was, a, that was a real learning curve for me in, in, to go to Spain. Um, I, I learned so much in Spain in a year and a half, in two years, so much. The way they played the game, you know, the, when I left United, it, the, the game there was fast. It was furious. You know what I mean? It was balls down the channel, get in the box, get it across. You know, you could give a ball away for fun, you know, at United. There was no problem with that. You could pa give a pass that was a 50-50. That was fine. There was nothing wrong with that at all. The, whereas when you went to Spain, it was more keep the ball, look for an opening, pass it around, keep control of it, and all the rest of it. And it seemed slower, the game. But when you're out, actually out there, it was fast enough. It was more or less what the games are like today, you know, in, in terms of keeping possession. But I sometimes feel for the players today playing today, especially even at Old Trafford or any ground for that matter, in the Premier League or Championship, is that you can't give the ball away. Because if you give the ball away, mm -hmm. even I'm there, you can hear the crowd go, Ugh, you know, as if, yeah, what have you yeah. done? You know, so all of a sudden I, I find the game now is played by players who would sooner give a 10-yard pass rather than try a 30-yard pass in case it goes astray. The exact same thing could be said about Gaelic games. A lot of people would love to have it back that it would be more direct. Just leave it off and let the ball do the work and all that. Kevin, can yeah. I talk to you about management? I saw that when you came to the end where with Blackburn, Doug Leash offered you uh, a coaching role, didn't he? Did he offer you a coaching role at Blackburn? He, he did. He did. He said to me, Kevin, there's a coaching role here for you. You want to be the reserve team manager. You know, go ahead. It's, it's, it's yours if you want it. Um, and it was something I did think about. Uh, it was something that I thought. But at that particular time as well, a friend of mine, Paul Stretford, who I knew over the number of years, being with Blackburn as well, was a football agent. And Jesper also was a good friend of his, who was a very good friend of mine as well, Jesper, because I played with Jesper at United. And he was wanting to get the three of us together to build up the practice that he had started, which was proactive sports management, and to really kick it on. And I must admit that appealed to me very much at the time. And it was at the time it was absolutely perfect. This was you're talking about 94. Premier League had started in 92, you know, and the whole agency business and what yes, when I was doing hospitality and events, you know, and football matches and all that was just really taking off. So the timing was right for me to take advantage of that. And in, in all fairness, that was a very good decision. What was, say, from a soccer point of view, what was the happiest time of your career at club level? Where? It's, it's so hard. At the club level, definitely United. You know what I mean? I spent 10 years there. So, you know, and, and the club itself. So the, the happiest at club level was, without a doubt, United. And yet, you know, the, the break in Spain was more interesting than anything else, you know, just for the style of play and what I learned over there. And then I came back and I was very fortunate that four and a half years with Blackburn Rovers was a period when Blackburn Rovers were just coming to the fore. The Premiership just came in. We just got promotion via the playoffs. We finished fourth, then second, and then they went on to win it the year I'd left. But so, but in all of that, you throw in then what happened with, you know, Ireland, you know, and yeah. so that took off. You know, I made my debut, I think, in 1980 or 81. And then all of a sudden, you know, we had it. We had a really good team at times, but just never really seemed to qualify, you know, for the major championships, we, which we hoped to do, until we got the big breakthrough in 88. And then that period from 88 till I retired in 94, you, you couldn't get six better years to play. You know, they're probably some of the best years you could ever have. Was well, Stuttgart, I, I, I um, was as somebody said, the World Cup, obviously, in 1990. Was Stuttgart the big one? Obviously, you were playing your trade with all the lads that were playing with England. Was that, I suppose it's hard to pinpoint a, a highlight or in your career with the international team, Kevin, but was that one? That was obviously... Oh, the, without a doubt. I, I think that if you looked at my international career, for me, that one stands out. You know, this is the first time we qualified for a major championships. We're not only in it, but we're in the same group as England. It's not only that, but it's the first game as well. 
So we go in there kind of like as the underdog, but we we always felt ourselves, you know, we, we looked around and we're thinking, you know, I play with him, I play against him. I, you know, this isn't a problem because you, you must remember that when you looked at the, our team, an awful lot of it was made up of Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool players. So, you know, you felt confident enough that you could take them on. But like any game, you're going to obviously need a break and get a bit of luck as well along the way. But to come out of that with the results we got and to beat them in that game, yeah, I think you'll always look back and remember Stuttgart as number one. Was there, I know you played with, with the English lads at club level. Would they wouldn't have been, would they have been dismissive of Ireland at international level thinking that they might they were bigger fish to be fried rather than Ireland? Well, they would have thought, listen, we can take this slot. You know what I mean? They, they, would have, they would have been expected to take them. As Let's be honest about it. A majority of people would have been. And if you went to the bookies, they don't often get it wrong. They would have got that wrong. You would have got good odds on Ireland to beat England, you know what I mean, in that particular game. So, yeah, I could imagine them. You know, as a professional footballer, even as an England player, you would have still looked at the team and went, listen, guys, look at this team. These are no mugs. You know, we've got to be on our best to try and beat them. And, you know, and, and it didn't happen for them. With Jack Charlton, Kevin, and with all the managers that you played under, who were the guys, who was the manager that stood out for you in your career? Oh, it was a tricky one, Tomas. You know, you know you, you've got, it's a combination little bit. If you ever say, oh, a bit of this, a bit of him, a bit of the other, you know. Um, Kevin Heffernan always had a huge influence on my career, even going forward from what I learned from him during that and I would have brought a lot of that with me into the professional game and over to England um, then after that obviously Big Ron was a little bit different um, Jack is different again then there was Doug Leach they were you know, kind of like you know my, my my main three guys you know and if you're just tell me well, what what is there one that sticks out not really but there's a bit of him that you, you take some of him some of him some of that and put them together you've got the perfect guy <laughs> I was going to say, like with the Irish setup, you have the perfect blend. You have the Dubs, you have the United, you have Ireland. Uh, do you ever get back to? Do you go to United games? You go to Ireland games? You obviously go to Dubs games. I say, do you like going back? Do you go back to Old Trafford? For that? Yes, I, you know, every every season, I, I I pay for my two season tickets, and my wife and myself go whenever we can, whenever we can. And you know, sometimes if my son is back, he'll come with me. You know, so yeah. You know, I'd be there if I'm here, you know, unless I'm, if I'm not away. I would always go to the United Games and always support them. Same way with the Ireland Games. I haven't been to as many as the Ireland Games over the night. But um, but in general, yeah, if there's a big game coming on, I would be over to support it. And um, the dubs at the moment, Kevin, there are, there's a bit of a joke, uh, serious and all, as the COVID-19 is, that it was the only way that we were going to stop the dubs going on to do six in a row. But they're yeah. a phenomenal team, aren't they? The way they uh, just, they, it's a culture they, they've created. It, it is indeed, Tomas, you know what I mean? And I must admit, I, I'd never thought there was going to be a better team than the Kerry team I played against. Never. You know what I mean? Mm. What that Kerry team achieved to me and the manner in which they achieved it and the way they did it as well, I thought, Nobody's going to touch them. But you've got to hold your hands up to this Dublin team. They have done that and surpassed that, you know what I mean, by, by winning the five in a row. You know, and as you well know, you know, the only way you're, you gauge people or judge people or judge a team is by what they win, you know what I mean? And it's not been easy for Dublin to do it, you know, to get it mustered it up again, the enthusiasm to do it again and again and again. And it just shows you how good they are. You know what I mean? And you just don't do that with sure commitment. You've got to have a lot of ability, a lot of skill, you know. And the main thing as well, I think they've had, you've got to have the manager at the top. They certainly had him. Jeez, it is unreal. Um, Gavin was as good as they got for you, isn't he? Absolutely. Uh, Kevin, before I leave you go, um, what, say outside of family now, what do you get a kick out of? Golf or how do you, how do you, what do you look forward to most? I look forward most to, which I was supposed to be a few weeks ago, down in Kerry with Ogie and Bomber whipping their asses at golf. That's what I would have got a, a lot of fun out of. But unfortunately, it's had to be put back a bit. You know, uh, every year, my, my brothers, myself, we, we head off, you know, for a game of golf around Ireland somewhere. And uh, this year, we were due to go down there to see the lads. And um, hopefully, we'll pick it up later on. But yeah, if you were to say to me, yeah, what do I look forward to most? It's a good game of golf.
Yeah, geez, so it's whatever about not being able to travel. Kevin Ireland certainly has enough good golf courses to keep us yeah. to keep us busy. Listen, Kevin, I and a lot of people, you know, they say I was looking closely because I knew I was going to be chatting to you. I was looking closely at the seventy-seven game, and uh, you know, the nineteen seventy-six when you made the the famous run up the field, you were always waiting for a chance to go, weren't you? Any time, any if there was an opening, you'd go. Yeah, but it, it was nothing that was planned, and and and, and yeah. I can't remember doing it in training when I was with Dublin. You know, it's, you know, even going back to Parnell Park days, and when we'd have a game. Um, yeah, I always just thought, but it wasn't pre-planned before. I don't think I'd done it before, really. But then when the opening came, you know, and it was there, you just said you have to go for it. And, you know, if you could open up, you opened, you know, the Kerry team. You know, I mean, that helped other people running into position as well. So, yeah, it just happened. As you know, Thomas, that's what happens in football in any game. You just see the moment you seize it and you just hope it works out. He started. He created something. Geez, the he started the whole thing with the dogs and the Kerry, and we were brought up on it, and it's still going, and they're still going at each other. And I suppose that tradition hopefully will keep going forever. And hopefully, the last thing I'll say, hopefully Kevin, he'll get back soon as well to starting it all over again. Oh yeah, it'd be brilliant. The la- apparently you were asked. I don't know. Is this true? You were asked. Was it the Red of United or the Green of Ireland that gave you the most pleasure? And you answered, it was the Blue of Dublin. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> no, it's always uh, it's always so hard because you know the greatest honor you can have is to play for your country, you know. And then you look upon and you think, well, you know, when you're at this level that we're at, it's the greatest honor is always going to be to win something. Unfortunately, we never really won something with Ireland, but I did win something with United, and then I won something with uh, with Dublin. So when you're asked to say which is the bigger, the FA Cup medal. Or the All Ireland Medal, I've always sided on the fact that your first experience is always the one you hold, you know, closest and dearest in many ways. And being from Dublin, being raised in Dublin, you know, and playing in front of your own team then as well, for me then priority number one has to be the seventy six All Ireland final. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, you're at like what you have achieved in all areas of sport Kevin you're a you're a hero to us all I mean we'd be big United fans I won't say we're huge Dublin fans but we'd still have great admiration <laughs> for what you all did it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you Kevin I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us tonight and uh, all the best and I hope you whip Bomber and Ogie's ass the next time you see them <laughs> alright <laughs> no problem cheers to most take care thanks a million thanks a million Kevin perfect